everybody has different needs. And as a result, we can all request for different accommodations. In the college world, in the workplace world, and sort of beyond that environment, um, you have a duty to be able to go in, voluntarily self-disclose the fact that you have diabetes, and then request that you start this interactive, reasonable accommodation process. And so there is no exclusive list of five accommodations for people with disabilities. It's what you as an individual need to successfully manage your diabetes, be successful at school, be successful on the job or wherever else. Don't be afraid to ask. And most importantly, don't be afraid to say what you want, you know, because usually what you want is what you need. I've had to make accommodations in like pretty much every sense through like work and school and sports, clubs, like everything. And I think just having them set in place before the issue arises is like the best course of action just because you kind of set that standard. You might need to have something written down or some type of documentation to start that process early. As soon as the kid en <laughs> enters childcare. Um, we need to be, we should be having conversations about full opportunity to participate um, and accommodations that that child needs. You'll want to come up with a plan. Sometimes it's called an accommodations plan. Sometimes it's called a 504 plan. That's because of the 1973 Section 504 uh, the Rehabilitation Act laws. I was in the public school system, so I had a 504 plan set up pretty much immediately. This could be going to the bathroom, getting water whenever you want, having snacks and drinks available, going to the nurse's office. Being able to sit out of gym class, that is a big one for a lot of people. I mean, leniency and academic deadlines. In sports, this is taking breaks whenever you want, medical timeouts, Gatorade available 24-7. <laughs> when we're thinking about diabetes and we're thinking about testing accommodations, what are the accommodations that we need? We need access to food and water. We need access to our blood sugar checkers or to our CGMs. Um, we need access to the insulin. Um, we may need access to restroom breaks, testing in a minimally distracting environment. Like those tests, I'd take it under different testing conditions. So instead of it being um, like in a big group with people, I was like separate so I could have like my food and my snacks and take breaks and stuff like that. And typically that is so you are not bothering the other people taking the test. It's because you beep. It's because you're slurping on a juice box in the middle of an exam. So those are sort of base level testing accommodations, whether those are your end of grade tests, your end of course tests that you have in the K through 12 world, or more serious standardized tests like an ACT, an SAT, or a GRE. Whoever is the provider of the test is going to be the, the best place for you to get the accommodations you need. That being said, if you're taking the test at your school, starting with a, um, a school counselor or a school administrator, it's a pretty good place to start because they'll be able to direct you. So when you think about coming into college as a freshman, there may be very clear accommodations that you think that you're going to need. I can tell you that most colleges will have um, some type of disability coordinator or disability office. I think the first meeting I had when I got to college was in the disability center. So I'd emailed them ahead of time to make an appointment. I brought my 504 plan from high school so they could see what accommodations I'd used. I'm most likely the director of that office or somebody who works under that director will then ask you for documentation, um, proof of your disability. So for instance, um, I asked for a single room, I asked for, you know, my own personal refrigerator, I asked for a kitchen. You know, I need my phone, I don't want a professor to say, hey, put your phone away when I'm checking my blood sugar. After that, it's really getting in contact with your doctor's office um, to make sure that uh, per what you asked for, they write a letter for. If somebody is in fact requesting accommodations and are asking that they be retroactive, I can't think of a circumstance in which they might apply. That really reinforces the need to ask for the accommodations up front and to be your own first and best advocate in any circumstance. Don't allow them to uh, guess or to uh, you know, make up accommodations for you based on what their preconceived notions are of what your disability is. Um, put everything on the table. So again, we want to make sure that we're asking for accommodations that are necessary, reasonable, and appropriate, and that do not alter the nature of our academic programs or our courses. That's the magic formula.
The purpose of a workplace accommodation, just like K through 12 accommodations, just like higher ed accommodations, is to level the playing field and to allow you to be able to do the job functions that you were hired to do, um, sort of without the distraction of diabetes. I've worked like every job under the sun when it comes to like retail or um, like grocery stores, like every job you could think of, I've probably worked it. Um, but I mostly needed accommodations when I worked retail because I was just running around all the time and so my blood sugar would be skyrocketing or it'd be like plummeting. Accommodations exist outside of school and work also. Diabetes exists everywhere we go. That includes concerts and theme parks and public buildings and all sorts of things. Definitely call, um, email, do what you have to do to make sure that you have a lot of information regarding accommodations for things like travel, concerts. Every single time I go to a sporting event or a concert, I just know that I'm going to have to like basically give them a spiel. And so I just have it ready. I like, I'm like, all right, listen, like this isn't a clear bag, but I'm allowed to have it. Like I'm allowed to bring my water bottle in. I'm allowed to bring X, Y, Z. And I think just like knowing what you're allowed to do, like knowing what the law says, knowing your rights, I think just like should empower you a little bit. I actually have had um, a time where I couldn't bring a certain bag into a theme park here in New Jersey. I did have a, a, a diabetes bag and coming into the entrance, um, they didn't want you to have a bag of a certain stature and a certain length. They were uh, getting ready to turn me away because of how big the bag was. And uh, at the time, uh, my partner explained, you know, hey, like this is his bag, uh, it has his insulin in it, has his stuff in it. Um, he needs it in order to walk around the park. And I also spoke up about that as well. Um, and they granted me access into the park, but it wasn't without a conversation first. I want like equity and I want what's like my, like right as someone who like does have a disability, um, even if you don't see it, you know, like it's there. And so I want my accommodations, even if I don't have to use them, I want them set in stone so that they're there. The biggest issue with uh, accommodations and accessibility is that most people paint it as the worst case scenario with people with disabilities. And in reality, it's something that we just simply need and it's something that's very positive um, and, and levels the playing field for people with disabilities. Like we all go through a lot and I think it's important that we receive like some sort of accommodation just to make it just like a tad easier.